Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a recent discovery that suggests that this right here, a neutron star collision, delivered pretty much most of the heavy elements to our own solar system approximately 80 million years before the creation of the solar system. In other words, we may have finally found the source of a lot of elements on our planet Earth and of course inside of your body. For example, things like iodine which doesn't really exist without certain very, very powerful events in the universe. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So modern scientists believe that um, these events, neutron star collisions, create approximately 20% of all of the really heavy elements, including things like gold, platinum, and of course iodine. And if you're wondering why I even mention iodine, well it's because it's a heavy element that is inside your body and is responsible for producing certain hormones. So iodine is actually one of those elements that was created in a neutron star collision. It can also be created in a different event known as collapsar that I mentioned in one of the previous videos, but those events are very rare compared to neutron star collisions. So we believe that pretty much everything on Earth and of course in the solar system came from a system approximately thousand of light years away from us with two neutron stars colliding and then literally showering the entire solar system and the cloud that it was made from with all of these heavy elements. Now let's try to visualize this. So here is what the early, early solar system may have looked like. There is a tiny, tiny gas giant known as the sun in the middle, and there is a very large planetary disk around it. This is all very simplified, but essentially it kind of looked like this. This is something like 4.6 billion years ago. For the most part, all of the stuff here right now is hydrogen, helium, uh, there's a lot of silicates here. There are some metals and there's of course iron, but there is just not a lot of stuff like gold. There's definitely no um, heavy elements like platinum. As a matter of fact, pretty much none of these yellow or orangey elements that you see here were available until this particular event. At a distance of approximately 1000 light years away from the solar system. And if you were to look at our galaxy and try to understand how far away this is. So here's Earth. Here's the galactic center with the supermassive black hole in the middle. And um, we're talking about a distance of only about this much, this tiny, tiny, tiny amount that's very, very difficult to see. At this distance, we had these two neutron stars that were orbiting around one another. And just like they usually do, they eventually collided with one another, producing what's known as a hypernova. And uh, there you go. So there is that supernova that occurred, or technically hypernova that occurred approximately 4.6 billion years ago. And as the material from the supernova approached our solar system that it was about to form, it bombarded the entire solar system and enriched it with all sorts of heavy elements. Now, um, the calculations so far suggest that approximately one-tenth of the mass of the moon of material was delivered by the supernova to the entire solar system. And this event was also extremely bright. Um, if Earth existed back then, it would have been um, very easily visible during a typical day and most likely it would be the brightest thing in the night sky as well. And despite this being relatively far away from us, if life existed back then, it would most likely struggle to survive because this hypernova was very, very, very powerful. Now, there are still a couple of questions that need to be answered. So first of all, how do we know all this? And second of all, um, let's visualize how much of material was actually delivered compared to, let's say, the size of Earth. So let's start with the visual comparison. So here is the total mass of all of those heavy elements. Now, this is compared to Earth, and um, as you can see, it's actually not that much when you think about it. This is the entire solar system. This is not just our planet. So in other words, in total, um, if you were to combine all of the heavy elements from every single planet, from every single asteroid, you would probably get something of this size. And this of course includes things like gold and platinum. Alright, now how did they actually discover this? Well, they couldn't really look on Earth. 
And that's because looking um, at various uh, minerals or rocks on Earth is not very accurate. They have been changed over time, they've evolved. And, uh, you know, things like gold, for example, has been used and reused so many times that it will be very difficult to find out how old it is or where it came from. But you can do this by using things coming from asteroids, because asteroids, for the most part, have been stuck in space for billions of years. They've been isolated from everything. So if you were to isolate heavy elements from the asteroids, they would be quite pristine and um, would present you with original information. So this is exactly what the scientists behind the paper in the description below decided to do. They decided to take a look at the heavy elements that would only be produced during neutron star collisions. They took a few samples from an asteroid and then studied various isotopes and byproducts of those isotopes. And using a regression, they calculated that at some point in time, the level of those isotopes was the highest. This is based on uh, two specific elements, plutonium and uh, curium, both of which cannot be produced in a supernova or any other event except for a neutron star collision or a collapsar. And like I mentioned before, collapsars are pretty rare. So they realized that approximately 4.6 billion years ago, the level of curium and plutonium was the highest. And um, because they are most likely to be produced in a neutron star collision, they deduced that, well, it's very likely that all of this stuff came from a neutron star collision approximately uh, 1,000 light years away from us, and also approximately 80 million years before the solar system was officially sort of created. And they were also pretty certain that this was not a typical supernova because the elements that they've detected and also the pattern they've detected was different. It was more similar to a pattern from a neutron star collision. And this particular event, the hypernova from those two neutron stars, probably lasted for about a week. And that one week it was able to bombard our solar system with enough material to, well, be everywhere on Earth now, even inside of you and me. And although it's possible that some other events occurred afterwards and possibly enriched our system even more, this one was most likely the first such event. Uh, and these hypernovae usually occur a few times per million years, but in different parts of our galaxy. So um, having one near us or having one close enough to us is quite rare. It might only happen every billion years or so. Now, unfortunately, we don't really know what part of the night skies this happened in, and we also don't re even know um, what happened to those neutron stars afterwards. They most likely became a black hole. But what we do know is that it's very likely going to happen again, and it may have also enriched other stars that were made from the same sort of cloud of material that our solar system was made from. So it's very likely that there are quite a lot of stars out there with very similar composition and very similar materials on the inside to our sun and that probably have somewhat similar planets as well. Now, whether they're terrestrial like Earth or at least somewhat similar to a planet like Mercury, for example, is another question. For all we know, maybe all of those other planets in the other star systems turn out completely different from what we have in ours. One day, hopefully, we will discover this twin of ours. There is actually a chance that we may have already discovered at least one, and I've talked about this in one of the previous videos, but we don't really know. Maybe one day, but not today. On that note, hopefully now you know a little bit more about these hypernova, and most importantly, where a lot of the heavy elements on our planet came from, including the iodine inside of you. But that's really it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.